Hey guys, this one is from the Hibbler textbook, and I think it's in the 14th and 15th editions. What this one says is we've got a ball that's ejected horizontally from this tube with a speed of 8 meters per second. And then we want to find the equation of the path, y equals f of x, and then find the ball's velocity and the normal and tangential acceleration components when t is 0.25 seconds. So quite a few things to, so to find there. And this one's actually an interesting problem. I kind of like this one. Now, first of all, let's look at this picture. So if you notice, we've got curved motion, right? If you look at that blue line, that's why it wants the normal and tangential components of acceleration. Okay, because since we have a curved path, we're going to have that normal component. Now, let's go ahead and let's find y equals f of x first. So basically it wants the equation for y in terms of x. That's what it's looking for. Now let's go ahead and see how we could do that. Um, what do you all think? Well, let's look at what we've got. So VA is 8 meters per second. Now notice what direction that is in, right? It's all in the x direction. So there is no y component there. So that means VX is 8 meters per second. And looking at that, I want to get an equation for y as a function of x. All right, well, let's see what we can do here. How about if we try this kinematic equation? So x equals x naught plus vx naught times t plus one half ax t squared. Okay. So remember, we could use this equation for projectile motion, which is kind of what we have going on here, right? Now, do we have an acceleration in the x direction? No, we don't, right? It's just shooting the ball out of this tube, and then it just, you know, moves under gravity. So basically, gravity is the only thing we have to worry about for acceleration. That is not in the x direction. So this is going to go to zero. And what about our initial displacement, x? Well, if I make this right here A, the reference point, that's going to go to 0. So with this, I can write x equals the initial x velocity, which is 8, times t, right? So this gives me a, you know equation for x as a function of t, which is not what we wanted. So let's keep going and see what we can do. We want I as a, or y as a function of x. So now let's look at the y direction. Okay, and let's look at this same equation here. So y equals y naught plus v y naught t plus one half a y t squared. Okay, and let's see what we have here. Remember, this is going to be our reference point. What would our initial y be? Well, that would be zero, right? So that goes to zero. Do I have an initial y component for velocity? No, because VA is all in the x direction, right? There is no y component, so this is going to go to zero. And then what about the acceleration in the y direction? Well, we can't get rid of gravity, right? Gravity is what's going to pull this downward, so we have to have that. So let's go ahead and make that negative 9.81. And then now let's put everything together. All right, so y is going to be 1 half times negative 9.81 t squared, which ends up being y equals negative 4.905 t squared. Okay, now let's call this equation 2. So looking at this, I've got two equations as a function of time, right? x and y both as a function of time. So do you see a way where we could get y as a function of x? because that's what we need. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to equation 1 and let's solve that for time. All right, so t would be x over 8. Uh, we can call that equation 3. And then now I've got t as a function of x. Well, what if I plug that back in here into equation 2? If I do that, I'm going to get rid of that time component, right? So let's do that. So from equation 2, 
we're going to have y equals negative 4.905 t squared, and we're going to plug equation 3 in for t. All right, so it's going to give us negative 4.905 times x over 8. Square that. And what you end up with is y equals negative 0.0766x squared. And that is what we were looking for. So we were able to get y as a function of x. And y would just be our displacement in the y direction, obviously. Um, it's going to be negative because if this is our origin, we're going to be below that origin, right, which would be negative. Okay, and notice it's quadratic, which makes sense for a projectile motion type scenario. So that's how we can go about getting rid of the time component, getting y as a function of x. Next thing we need to find is the ball's velocity. Let's do that next. Okay, so we want to find v. Now, I've got these expressions here that we found, right? So let's go ahead and use those. So x was 8 times t, and then y was negative 4.905 t squared. Now, how can I get v if I've got basically position equations? What about taking the derivative, right? So let's take the time derivative here. So x dot, remember the dot means first derivative with respect to time. So x dot is going to be 8. Do the same thing with y. y dot, or first derivative of y with respect to t, would be negative um, 4.905 times 2 times t. So that is negative 9.81t. Okay. So now I've got my components. So this is essentially Vx. This is Vy, right? Now I want that at t equals 0.25 seconds. So what should we do there? Well, Vx, or x dot, doesn't have a time component, right? So x dot here is still 8. What about y dot, though? That has a t component. That means we need to plug in our t value of 0.25. And that's going to give us negative 2.4525. So, like I said, this is Vx. And this is Vy. So now to get the magnitude, we do the square root of Vx squared plus Vy squared. Right, so the square root of 8 squared plus negative 0.4525 squared. And that is 8.367 meters per second. Now that is our magnitude of velocity at 0.25 seconds. Okay, so obviously if you did it at a different time, you would get a different value because everything's a function of time here. Next thing which is the last thing, is acceleration. All right, so we need the normal and tangential components of acceleration. All right, now you might be wondering, well, how are we going to do that? Well, let's think about what acceleration we have here. If we look up here, we didn't have anything in the x. In the y direction, we had acceleration due to gravity, right? So that is our magnitude of acceleration that we have, that 9.81. So keeping that in mind, let's come down here and draw a picture. Let's say that's x, that's y, and let's say our ball is right here. And then I know I've got gravity, right? So that's 9.81 meters per second. Okay, and then let's put our normal tangential frame on here. Okay, let's look up here. So remember if we're curving this way, let's say I'm looking at this point right here, n is going to be directed this way, tangential would be directed, you know, in the direction of motion. So for this one, I'm going to say this is n, and then this is t. All right. 
and then we're going to have a theta here right there and then that would be theta also okay now if you look at that this is the magnitude So this is the magnitude of acceleration that we've got because that's the only acceleration we have in the whole problem. And that means if I've got this N and T frame, I can find the N component and the T component. All right, so just like in statics where you have a force and you break it up into X, Y components, same thing here except for we have this new N, T frame. Okay, so if we look, we would have our normal component right here along the n-axis and then we would have a t component here okay now using that we can go ahead and get our components only thing we need to do is find this angle theta and how can we do that the way we're going to get this angle is by using our velocity components all right so we've got our vx vy values right we know that. So let's draw the XY frame because these were in Cartesian coordinates here. Okay, so we've got that. Now looking at this, I can find my signs, right? So I had a positive VX, I had a negative VY. So that means I'm going to be right here for velocity. Okay, and this right here would be my VX. And then VY would be going down, whoops, like that. Okay, so let's find this theta here. Right, and this theta and this theta will correspond with each other. So theta then is going to be the arc tangent of VY over VX, because remember tangent's opposite over adjacent. So we will have arc tangent of VY. 2.4525. I left the negative off here because I already drew it in this direction, so I already knew what quadrant we were in. And then Vx is going to be 8. All right. So put that in your calculator. It needs to be in degree mode. You get 17.04 degrees. All right, so that's what we'll use for this theta here. Now we're just going to break this into components. Okay. So let's start with AT. So AT is right here. And if this is our magnitude, I'm trying to get this component here. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to have 9.81. This side is opposite this angle. So we're going to have sine 17.04. This is in the positive T direction, so that stays positive. So that gives me 2.875 meters per second squared. So this is our AT, one of the things we needed. And then AN, let me do a similar thing. So here's AN, this is adjacent to this angle. So we're gonna have 9.81 cosine 17.04. And that gives us 9.379 meters per second squared. There you have it. All right. So that's how you can get your AT and your A sub N. So don't forget about this little method here. A lot of people forget that they can do that. If gravity is all you have, then that is going to be the magnitude of your acceleration. You can use that to break it into the T and N components, just like we did here. And if you do this method, you want to kind of have a way to check and see if you're correct. You could always take the magnitude of this and you should get 9.81. All right, so if we do that here, take the square root of 2.875 squared plus 9.379 squared, and you know, I got some rounding in here. We get essentially 9.81 meters per second squared. So that checks out, looks good. Hope you like that one. I'll see y'all next time.